you were able to network your way to the top. You're probably the most known reporter, you and Woj, in the whole NBA. How were you able to just climb that ladder over the years? Go to the NBA. That was my dream, was right. playing in the NBA. But once I realized that wasn't going to happen, I'm like, how can I stay around the game? If I'm not going to play, how can I keep playing the game of, of this basketball life? And so I always loved writing. I always loved the NBA. So I kind of just combined both passions. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, it was a lot of cold calls, cold texts. And you know, when you reach out to people, they don't ask how old you are. Right. That's how the first, it's really about how much match, you know, how mature you are, mm -hmm. how professional you approach the conversation. And because you were the youngest one coming up, but people took you serious because of what you provided. No one knew how old I was really until, you know, they had until like, they tried to buy you a drink or something. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm like, Welcome back to the Digital Social Hour, guys. I'm your host, Sean Kelly. Here are my co-host, Charlie Cavalier. And our guest today, Sean Strania. How's it going, man? Sean, great, great having you. Beautiful studio you have. Yeah. I'm glad we were able to make this happen in Vegas. Absolutely, Appreciate man. Me. It's been a cool summer league. What, what have you thought about it so far? I mean, definitely like every year, summer league, as far as the fan base, like now you go to the arena, the amount of fans that are here is, is and it's packed. Obviously, Victor Wembanyama being a big part of that, but yeah. I mean, the arena is just, has an amazing environment, great crowd. And it's not just for Victor's games. Like you, you, you'll go to like a, you know, any, 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 any of these games at either the, the Cox Pavilion, Thomas and Mac, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's, it's filled with fans. So yeah. it's definitely uh, my first summer league was 2013. I was doing the headlights, didn't know anyone. I was 19 <laughs> years old. So from now, then to now, I'm definitely way more comfortable, Yeah. but the amount of fans and like hype and interaction there so is, much more. it's, it's gone exponentially higher. That's sick. Yeah, it seems like every year it just steps up, and now they announce the tournament, right? Yeah, the in-season tournament. Um, yeah. You, you're talking about regular season, right? Yeah, yeah. In so, season, yeah. so there's going to be the in-season tournament, mm -hmm. all all 30 teams playing for basically an in-season, regular season championship type, type. you know, during the first half of the season. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's going to be a lot of excitement around it. Obviously, a little bit more uh, prizes, uh, more money for the players that win the, win, win the entire championship for the in-season tournament. So... I'm curious to see how that's going to play out and and how these guys are able to get the the, the you know uh, you know the gumption to go play at a higher level for some of these regular season games that might not have had the same mean, uh, right. meaning in past years. Yeah, because 82 games, they, it's tough to like you know lock in for that amount of time. Yeah, and this will give a, a new twist to it, right? Like yeah. those national TV games will have a little bit more uh, oomph behind it, and you're going to be playing for something, and the winning team getting you know a million dollars. Um, you know, like that's that's going to be big. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to see because there's a lot of those like, you know, mid-January, mid-February games where it's just a lull in the season. Do you think people are going to start counting if they win this, you know, in-season tournament? Not as, not quite like a ring, but do you think they're going to, you know, give it a little bit more credence and like, I won, I'm a, I'm a winner, I'm a champion sort of thing from winning that in-season tournament? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, it's 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 always going to be hard to like surpass right. the, the Larry O'Brien trophy. Like that's always going to be the, the, the number one thing. But I think from, from the perspective of, uh, something else to play for and and just heightening up some of these regular season games the financial uh you know it, you know the, the financial prize is going to be one thing but i think um you know you're, you're going to want to compete at a high level especially when there's a championship of any length on the line yeah um and i think it, it's going to be good for these teams to build the right habits early in the season but i think overall what we're seeing now in the nba is just the amount of parity that exists uh in regular season i think does mean more than it ever has yeah uh because like last year, you could, you went into the playoffs, like maybe 10 of the 16 teams mm -hmm. probably went into the playoffs saying, I think we can win a championship. Yeah. And in past years, it's really just one or two teams. So Facts. I think I think that's got to be something the league is, is really, yeah. really happy about. I didn't know who would win it last year, and I haven't felt that way in a while. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, we were talking about it all during the playoffs. Yeah. And seeing Joker obviously turn it on after a while, it was, it was fun to see. Yeah. So you've gotten to see Victor play in person. What did you think about his first two games, and do you see him just dominating? Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I don't know if he's going to dominate like right off the bat, but yeah. I think you're seeing the signs from him that show you why he's going to be one of the more most unique players definitely in the league next year and for years to come. I mean, when you think about, um, you know, he's able to ball handle, he's able to move, the way he's able to, you know, cross over like he's Kevin Durant, the way he's able to post up um, like Shaq at different times. Like he has so many elements of these all-time greats in his game. Yeah. Now it's just going to be about putting it all together, um, you know, continuing to work on his body, getting repetition, getting rhythm, um, strengthening his body. And I think 
once he puts all of that together, you could just tell he's going to be a force. I mean, just his first game, I know statistically people were down on him, but uh, very down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like one of, of the first plays in the game that he had, he literally got the ball uh, three fourths length of the court, dribbled the ball up all the way, mm -hmm. um, passed a couple defenders, found a guy with an assist for a layup. Yeah. Like that's stuff that we haven't seen from a guy his size and do it, how fluidly he does it. Yeah. And there was another play that first game where he had, literally had a crossover. He missed the layup, but he had a crossover where he went by a guy um, like he was Kevin Durant. And so at 7'5", um, he's going to be you know one of the more unique, if not the most unique player in the league next year. Yeah. And we saw the last game, he's able to make some more shots, feel a lot better. He even said the first game, I don't know what I was doing out there. Second game, he was getting his rhythm. And now the Spurs just uh, made it official. He's not going to play the rest of the summer league. So, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so breaking news on, on the podcast. That second game was Victor enough. Romaniama, two <laughs> yeah. games. Last game, tw uh, 2010, basically 27 points, 10 plus rebounds, um, and his summer league's over. Wow. They broke down the math very specifically for him. He actually turned down playing for France in the FIBA World Championship this summer because he literally did the math based off of how the Mets 92 team did uh, the last year he played with them. And the next two NBA seasons, they had basically worked it out that he was going to play like 192 games over the next like 24 months. That's a lot. And when you're just you know in this era of load management and when you're that big, I mean, feet break very easily, right? They want to like protect him as much as possible and planning ahead. Why, why play 10 more summer league games? I mean, you need this guy to be existing for 20 more years. Yeah, I mean, I, I think guys that size, there's always going to be that. I mean, that Greg Christos Odin Porzingis, um, you know, even Kevin Durant a few years in his career, he had a he had a Jones fracture, I believe. So there's always going to be that fear with guys that size. But you know, you, you can't really play with fear. You no. know, you, you yeah. can't play like that. And I, I know just being around Victor Wembanyama the last couple of years and definitely especially during this draft process the way his mentality is how locked in he is his attitude like his genuine love for the game there's guys that at the age of 19 with this much hoopla this much energy around him this much hype around him you can get lost in it but he's so focused he's so dialed in um and i i really think when, when you when you're around him you talk to him you talk to people around him he's so locked in and focused on greatness yeah um it's special to see and you want to see him see that through yeah i mean britney, Sp britney spears saw that firsthand how long <laughs> <it was. laughs> oh god so your your industry is all about connections you were able to network your way to the top you're probably the most known reporter you and Woj, in the whole nba how are you able to just climb that ladder over the years yeah i mean i think for a lot of people it's easy to see the the end of the end you know the end picture right like this year like oh how's you know how's he done this but i mean i've i've I started on this path my sophomore year of, of, of high school um, in 2010. And so, I mean, I wasn't doing it at this level, obviously. I wasn't breaking trades or signings or anything like that, but I was starting my path in writing. And I think just finding my voice after I, after I realized I wasn't going to go beyond high school basketball, go into college and play basketball and go to the NBA. That was my dream, was right. playing in the NBA. But once I realized that wasn't going to happen, I'm like, how can I stay around the game? How can right. I keep playing, you know? If I'm not going to play, how can I keep playing the game of, of this basketball life? And so I always loved writing. I always loved the NBA. So I kind of just combined both passions, started writing a lot. And I, I think from there, just, you know, 20, 2010, 2011, 2012, mm. uh, when I was, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, it was a lot of cold calls, cold texts, and, you know, reaching out to people, any number, any contact I can, I can find and just hope that I can, um, you know, when you reach out to people, they don't ask how old you are. Right. Yeah, that's not the first. It's really about how much match, you know, how mature you are, mm -hmm. how professional you approach the conversation. And I just tried to approach every conversation uh, professionally. I feel like I'm an old soul anyway. Mm -hmm. nice. um, and so I, I, I think for me, it's been just a gradual going to games, covering games, mm. going in person. Like my first game I covered in 2012, like that was big for me. Right. You know, actually being around the players, interviewing the players in person, um, seeing league execs, agents, things like that. And then my first summer league, 2013, I think that was like a, a game changer for me because I was in a very uncomfortable position because I was around, you know, all these people who I might know their name, but I've never seen them. They definitely don't know who I am at that point. Right. So I really just had to, you know, what's the saying? You know, you live in the uncomfort, you know, and, yeah, know and that you makes yeah, yeah. you, you know, even better. And on the other side, you, you hopefully learn from all the uncomfortable moments and uncomfortable positions you put yourself in and hopefully you thrive off that. And, um, 2013 summer league was big and from there it's just building 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 and you know one story leads to the next and you know you break a couple of 10 days you break a couple of regular season deals you break one or two big trades and i think you just keeps you know adding up those moments stacking up those moments and i think um you know treating those relationships with 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 fairness with with 
and trying to build equity and not just reaching out to people when you need something. Right. Right. Just providing value. Yeah. Yeah. And that's sick. I like what he said about the age because you were the youngest one coming up, but people took you serious because of what you provided. Yeah. I mean, no, no one asked, no one knew how old I was really until, you know, they had, to, you know, once I started meeting them. Right. And yeah. then maybe they saw like, yo, you look until like, they try to buy you a drink or something. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm like, uh, first of all, I either don't drink or I, right. I can't drink right now legally. Um, or they saw me like, you know, he looks like a baby. Like, right. um, and then you kind of like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm 21, mm -hmm. you know, I'm 22. And then you get the occasional, like, you know, why are you here? Like, why aren't you out partying with your friends? Like, why aren't you out doing this? Like, why aren't you out getting, getting, getting hammered? And I'm like, yeah. I, I love this too much. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm too, like I live my life. I feel like very disciplined mm -hmm. and, uh, you love know, that. I, I, I kind of know what goals I want. You know, I feel like I've set goals for myself every year Yeah. and then I just, it, you know, I try to obviously get to them and then set more goals. Nice. You know, just like continually set goals for yourself, continue to hopefully achieve them, set new goals. And I think that's the one way I, I feel like I'm never satisfied. You know, I, I never yeah. feel like I've, I've made it per se. I love that. Cause there's such a notion that you should just party in your twenties. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you should just grind. I agree. That's your like your prime years. Hey man, I'm 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 sitting with the right right yep. right right yep. minded people right now. So yeah. I, I definitely feel the same way. So what is one trade that needs to happen in the NBA? Just has to just, just like right now. Yeah, just you you cannot understand why it's not happening. Mm. Damian Lillard to Miami. I think right. for who? Well, does does Tyler Hero have to bounce? Please Tyler go. Hero would almost certainly have to be a part of any Damian Lillard package right. if you're Miami. And not not even necessarily to Portland. I think you find a third team, and I, from what I'm told, there are multiple teams out there that would give at least one first round pick for Tyler Hero. So you're Miami. You have two first round picks of your own. Right. You're able to go get another first at least. You, know, you might be able to get even more than one first from another team for Hero. Right. So you're able to go get another first for Hero. Um, so you have th potentially at least three first round picks you can trade to Portland. And then you you know you you add that with expiring contracts, maybe a young player, maybe some other additional assets like second round picks, etc. You have a pretty compelling offer that you can make to Portland for uh, Damian Lillard, and I think that's the you know when you when you talk about the remaining topics around the league, free agency has pretty much come to a halt. There are a few other few guys left: Christian Wood, Kelly Oubre, PJ Washington. I'm still you know you still got to monitor, but um, I think the Damian Lillard trade um, I think is definitely something that's at the top of mind around the league. Yeah, I've heard rumors of it. So do you have to be glued to your phone? Because you breaking these trades first is important, right? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I spend a lot of time on my phone. I can tell. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's a big part of my life for sure. You know, my, my family members understand it. Yeah. It's good. Like for me, my mom, my sister, my brother, you know, my dad, like they understand it. Yeah. You know, there's not like this weird tension. It's not like when you're on a date, right? Yeah. You leave the date yeah. for like 20, 30 minutes and then you come back and you're like, yeah, this yeah. is this. You is. have a legit reason to be using your phone at the dinner table. At least my family thinks so. Yeah. So I'll, I'll maybe he does. It's all legit. Yeah. Everyone listening, let, let the man be on his phone, please. <laughs> so, um, but no, I mean, uh, you know, during busy times of the year, trade deadline, free agency, draft, you know, you know, you're going to be on your phone. Right. You know, most, right now it's busy, right? Yeah. Summer league. Yeah. Most of your living, you know, day, you know, when you're sleeping, obviously there's not like a microchip you, yeah. you know, yet that you can put, you're you going to get Neuralink. I, I, don't, I think I care about my health too much to do that. But thankfully, there's no safe microchip or a neural yeah, link yeah. that you can put, put put on your head quite yet. So right now, you know, I, I try to get my rest yeah, when yeah. I'm up. Feel I'm that. going to be on it. I just know. saw a stat like the average American five and a half hours on your phone now. I, I would have guessed more, honestly. Yeah, compared to when iPhones came out, I think it was like 30 minutes. Well, let's just say I'm not your average human. Right. <laughs> right. At least when it comes to screen time. Probably right? double it for you. <laughs> yeah, I Triple. mean, they're trying Triple? to get all, all of our yeah, eyeballs time. Maybe, maybe quadruple. So who's going to be better next year, the Suns or the Warriors? It's mm. a great question. You know, I, I'm not really good at picks. I don't really do picks. Um, I think, I think, I think both teams. You know, you have to, you have to think they've they've elevated. You know, getting Chris Paul in, Dario Saric in. Um, I think, I think, I think Golden State has done a good job mm -hmm. uh, this off season. Mm -hmm. so yeah. They they they've doubled down on the, on their identity on yes. themselves, bringing back Draymond Green on that contract. I think there was a lot of the Grizzlies were the one team that was really, really passionate about going and getting a guy like Draymond Green. Obviously, they go out and get Marcus Smart. You're able to get that yeah. veteran culture setter. I think both guys would have been amazing. Imagine getting both guys, you know, both Marcus Smart and Draymond Green if you're Memphis. Crazy. Um, but they get Marcus Smart and Draymond Green. He, I think in his heart of hearts, he wanted to stay in Golden State. Yeah. He gets a deal done. He stays. And I think you double down your identity. Go get a veteran player in Chris Paul. 
Um, and I think it's go time now. Yeah. Um, and when you look at Phoenix, go, going and getting Brad Beal is one thing, but now they've surrounded this team with a bunch of minimum salary guys. Yep. I mean, they went out and got Eric Gordon, Yuta Watanabe. Um, they, they've really upgraded their team uh, on multiple fronts. Drew Eubanks uh, from Portland, they signed him on a minimum contract. He's very underrated. Going out and getting like four or five legitimate high-level rotation players that Eric Gordon, he's a guy that turned down uh, minimum deals with Golden State, with Milwaukee. He wow. turned on more money from other teams, from what I'm told, to go play in Phoenix. So, this, is a, this is a team that is clearly showed like they can go and, and attract talent, especially around Brad Beal and Kevin Durant. Eric and Gordon. Devin Booker. Yeah. yeah, they're looking nasty, man. And Eric Gordon was like, Eric Gordon in high school and at Indiana, everyone forgets how good EG was when yeah. he you know, first came in, but he was amazing and he's had an amazing career and he can do all sorts of great things for playoff yeah. games. I think when you're an average player in the NBA, it's easy to forget their high school and college like yeah. careers. Uh, we were talking to Spencer earlier and he averaged more points in the NBA than he did in high school and college. Spencer is one of a kind, yeah. a very unique player. I feel like he's gotten better the, the second half of his career than he was his first half. I mean, obviously he was in Detroit. He was he was up and down there, and then he gets to Brooklyn. I think his career just takes off. Then Washington, you know, th that was a lot a lot going on there. He goes to Dallas, leads that team in the Western Conference Finals with Luka Doncic and Jalen Brunson. Yeah. Now he's back in a leadership position with Brooklyn. I think second half of the year, I think, was one of the top players in assists yeah. um, in the league. So he's a guy that I think, you know, he's definitely taking off. But there's a lot of guys like that, man. And that's why yeah. scouting is very important making sure you identify guys that you feel like could play at a higher level come mm -hmm. NBA time yep. and not just be be peak, peaking in college. So. Yeah, because athleticism is one part of it, but they also need the mindset and other attributes. Right, no question. And and I think mentality is important. Um, work ethic is important. Yeah. How they handle themselves on off days and treatment of body and things like that. Like mm -hmm. Those are all things that scouts teams are identifying on a yeah. daily basis. Yeah, they'd be known if they go out to the club these days. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I'll just say this. NBA teams literally go above and beyond to do their research. I'm like sure. They, they, will, they will know everything about you yeah. by the time the draft process is over. With. There's too much at stake not to. Yeah. 100%. I mean, these, these are guys that are going to be making, like you said, 100 millions eventually as they end the league, sometimes 40, 50 million right off the bat. Um, and you, when you're a general manager, you don't want to get these picks wrong. So. Right. You're gonna to try to uncover any stone possible. Yeah, it's right? a bad look. Like the Knicks have a good history of that, but that's <laughs> or, or bad history. However you want to look at it. What do you mean the Eddie Curry signing was great back in the oh, 2000s? Man. Come on. Yeah. So, what's a typical day like for you during the season? Are you flying out to a bunch of games, or are you just working from one spot? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 good for me. I can be remote, um, but definitely like to go out to games. Being in Chicago, I'm able to see games. You know, Bulls games, Pacers games, Bucks games. So that's good for me. Yeah. Um, if I have to travel, I'll travel. A lot of it will be based on my content that I'm working on. Um, and then I started, fan, you know, I work at the Athletic and Stadium. I did do a FanDuel TV uh, last year. So nice. this past season, I spent, you know, one or two times a month going to L.A., especially the second half of the season yeah. for our shows in studio for FanDuel TV. So uh, that was, you know, it's good to make it out there. You can kind of dabble into doing that. You're able to go to Lakers games, Clippers games, mm -hmm. kind of mix in everything at once, get work done, yeah. connections done game coverage done so um you know a, a lot of west coast travel to la for FanDuel tv but other than that i'm buffering in chicago a lot of the time it's cold there man it gets cold in the winter time once you're there I, i'm born and raised there so, okay, so you're used I'm, to I'm, I'm used to i am cold. not i, I can't I do, I'm so where do you got where are you guys from i'm from california now i'm in got nashville it. Yeah. got it i'm from jersey now i'm here got you vegas yeah. full time it's hot here yeah it's hot it's, it's hot as hell out here. <laughs> as hell can here. we get nashville an nba team Is Ooh. Like, can we just, I, I got an idea. I, I've heard they're in the WNBA mix. Okay. I've, I have heard that through well, my sources. Well, Jaw is not fine in the West. So I think they add the team in Vegas, <laughs> and then they just slide the Grizzlies over to Nashville, which is a better economic market than Memphis anyways. Is it? Yeah, way better. Okay. There's a lot more money in Nashville than Memphis right now. Get the Grizzlies in the Eastern Conference. Add the new Vegas team that we all know is coming. Right? It's, it's Yeah. I mean, it, I think in, in due time. In due time. Yeah. Listen, I get asked, I got asked last year, like, oh, it's happening within six months. I said it's probably, you know, several years away. Right. You have the TV deal, the new collective bargaining agreement. I think once yeah. the league gets, gets past their TV agreement, I think you start to look at expansion and, and things of that sort. But, I mean, listen, the, the, the in-season tournament Final Four is going to be held in Vegas. Nice. There's a lot of stuff being done around Vegas, not only NBA, WNBA. We saw the Las Vegas Aces. Yep. They're, I mean, Kelsey Plum, those guys. The, the, 
I mean, Becky Hammond has those has those has those women balling out right yep. now. They so, took over the city. Yeah, they they took over the city. So it's clear between them, the Raiders, NBA can can be done here. Oh, absolutely. And I think you know once once the CBA now it's signed and done, TV deal. I think you know Vegas is definitely a prime market. What do you think of NBA Con? Did you go? I did not make it there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought it was interesting that they're gonna do that every year. Yeah, I mean, I think like I said earlier, summer leagues become such a such a big landmark event now more than ever it's like definitely times 50 since the was, time i was I bumper here. to bumper when i was on the road i was yeah. like this is never even happened. last year i mean the it was traffic like, has been crazy even, I, yeah. I i gotta say i don't know if it's f1 i don't know if it's ufc right you know the other night uh there's a lot going on here obviously summer league but the traffic's been crazy it's been it, terrible been insane. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's never insane. been this bad before never. in vegas it takes me like 30 minutes to get from one hotel to the other yeah i mean at one point last night uh two nights ago so, so if you're nba commissioner tomorrow What's the first thing you do? Mm. First thing I do. <laughs> That's a great I mean, and, and I, don't, don't give me something small. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I want you to, I want you to turn the league upside down. Ooh. Okay. Listen, I, I think, if you watch the NFL, um, the way they're able to make the draft such a such a big thing and. And the NBA draft is a big thing as well, but like it's different. You know what? What if you made it like a open to the you know outdoor, open to the fan, like. But you know, again, yeah. the NBA draft is open to fans. You know, Barclays Center, right? Uh, Barclays Arena, like it's been done. You know, with fans involved, Madison Square Garden, wherever they held it, yep. it's a caucus. Like it's done around fans. Um, I don't know. Like, could you make a multi-day thing, two, three-day event, two-day event? There's obviously two rounds. So you do round one one day, round two the next day. You put me on the spot. That's like one I of love the first it. things I, I'm you with know, you. idea yeah, I, feel you know, I could think of right there. Yeah, they should make it more exciting. Yeah, I mean, it's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, as someone who lives in Nashville, who literally watched them do exactly what you just described with the NFL draft on Broadway and take over everything outdoors. I got to say, though, yeah. you know, uh, Adam Silver was big on getting this playing tournament done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's been a major success because you have teams that are fighting for that positioning. Mm -hmm. Now, like, they have something to play for. Yeah, yeah. All throughout the regular season, especially the last, like, the last week, two weeks of the regular season since the playing tournament's been enacted, it's been by far the most fun, you know, for sure, since I've been, you know, tracking, uh, covering the league. I love it. Um, and now you have, you know, the in-season tournament. I think that's gotten a little bit of, you know, people don't know how to take it, but mm -hmm. I think, you, you see how the in-season tournament, uh, the playing tournament went. You know, I'm, I'm very curious to see how Adam Silver pulls off the in-season uh, in tournament. Playing tournament got a lot of hate at first, I remember, on social media. Mm -hmm. But now it's like the teams that are getting through, like the Miami Heat yeah. and the Lakers, just made the semifinals. And it's like it every great. team has an actual chance. And I think it's good. I think I think anything that just that uh, dissuades from tanking, I'm on board with. Right? Like anything that gives you more opportunity – I was disappointed to see the Mavs, you know, set a couple players. You think at the they end tanked? Of the I don't, tanking is a strong word. I think they purposely did not want to be in the playing tournament. It didn't seem like it. Yeah. You know, I think that's a strong way of phrasing it. But, you know, do you think that tanking needs? Do you think it, the system needs to be tweaked to avoid people from tanking even more than it already has been? I don't. I, don't, I mean, I, you know, there's always fines now. There's the different policies that are being enacted, but. I don't think this is like a novel concept. You know, there's been some essence of trying to jockey for lottery draft positioning forever. done for forever. So as much as I, I think the league would love for there to be a quick fix. I just, it's, it's tough. Yeah. So forget the stats just based off your own eyes and experience. Who's on your Mount Rushmore of players all time. I, this is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have to be in order. Just top four or five people. Yeah, I mean, I think you know I'm a Chicago guy. Got to go with MJ, of course. LeBron being this generation, Kobe. Mm -hmm. uh, those are three right there. Uh, at four, you know, four it's tough for me. Again, this is my this is just like guys that I you know. This is your starting. Five. The aliens have invaded Space Jam. Is here. <laughs> this is your starting five to save the fate of the universe. I go with uh, I go with Magic Johnson. You got to yeah, okay. have him up there, and probably go you know MJ at the two. So he needs a center now. Yeah, I, I, listen, center. You can give me anyone: Shaq, Kareem, Hakeem. Okay, I'll. You know, you got. What do you guys say? Yeah, I say Shaq. Yeah, yeah I, I would. I mean, I would take Shaq. Although I would have Tim Duncan on my team instead in of. Uh, I think he's the. I think he never really got the flowers that he deserved. As he was a power he forward, have. though, right? He was a power forward, 
and his game does not translate well to what is now going on in 2023. I think you I mean, think his game wouldn't work right now. No, I mean I think he'd make it work, but yeah. I think that the way he played then would, was different now with all the you know the elbow jumpers, a lot of the mid-range yeah. stuff that he did, the back to the basket stuff. You know, even as we saw Spencer talk earlier, like the back to the basket four is not yeah. the thing of the past. It's cool to see these days that not as athletic players like Jokic and Luka yep. are actually dominating yep. compared to just being insanely athletic. And do you think we're going to see, right? I mean, like this might be the, I'm not even sure the U.S. team would beat an all international team right now. Is this going to keep getting more and more in favor of international players? Or are we going to fix our AAU system and get back to maybe a little bit more of where we were a few years ago mm. in, terms, in terms of dominance? Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens to the Olympics. You yeah, know? I think that's always a good, good kind of, benchmark um you know we'll, we have the FIBA world cups this summer um but listen i mean Giannis, Jokic, and bead obviously all being luca abroad yeah luca like i think it's only good for the game yeah. to have guys like that um kind of shining and you know provide some good good balance what's next for you man and where can people find out what you're working on yeah i mean i'm, I'm here at summer league the rest of the week um you know you can obviously get, catch me on on twitter shams trania Instagram, Shams NBA, uh, do all my writing for The Athletic, do my video for Stadium and FanDuel TV. And, uh, you know, I've been kind of at this for a while now. Just just got to keep 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 growing and, and keep getting better. Love it, man. Thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate you guys. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.